Hi there, welcome to Becoming Madame. Today we're going to do a recipe on um, guacamole. And I know that it's not French, but uh, I actually have the recipe from um, a really good friend of mine from, who's Mexican, who I met here in Paris. So there's a, there is still a connection, and it's a really wonderful recipe. So here we go. So for the guacamole, you need uh, two ripe avocados, and the way you can tell an avocado is ripe is to feel it really well when you're when you're buying it. It needs to be smushy, not super smushy where you smush right into it, but not at all hard. Make sure that, and usually they're a nice dark um, black color when you cut into it. Obviously, there's the rind, which is a nice green, darker green, and then the lighter the lighter green on the inside. You also need half a lime, a hot pepper of your choice, half a white onion some Italian parsley, cilantro or coriander, as well as the key ingredient which is oregano, which might sound strange, but it's, it's really excellent. So, you cut your avocado into sections. My fingers actually, it's way easier. And just pull it apart. So when you pull it off like this, that's how you know that it's perfectly ripe. It should just really, once you get the, the um, seed out, this guy here, a really big one, it should just sort of pull off, and that's that's really the perfect ripeness. Don't forget the little knot on the bottom. Take him out. Okay, so once you've peeled your avocados, go ahead and cut them into little pieces. Stick them in your bowl. We're going to mash them up with a fork in a little bit. You just want to sort of get them into mashable little pieces. And also, don't forget, don't throw out your little core, your little seed, because uh, if you have leftover, or if you've made it in advance of a party or something, uh, it's a great appetizer for an uh, aperitif or something like that, if you have a cocktail party. Um, anyway, if you put the little nut in the middle of your mixture when you're done, it will keep it fresh, and it won't turn that funny brown, purpley color. So you want to dice your onions into tiny little cubes, as small as you can make them. So once your onions are diced, go ahead and, and put them into your mixture. And then chop up your little red pepper. Actually, it's a, it's a hot pepper. This is a hot pepper. But be careful to actually put the hot pepper on your fingers and put it on your tongue. This is extremely hot. Hot, ah, very hot. And so you don't want to use that much because otherwise you'll ruin it if you use too much. This one comes from the French islands and it's extremely hot. Oh my, my nose is running. <laughs> we dice it into really small pieces again and then ch tuck it in. I would start with less and work your way up if you have a tolerance for hot stuff. The French generally do not have a tolerance at all for something for spicy, and so I have to use a lot less than maybe I normally would because my husband won't be able to eat it. <laughs> you also need a little bit of uh, parsley. This is Italian parsley, and um, I just snip off, uh, I use about a handful of it, and so you snip it off from the, the main part, and then I chop it up. You also use some um, cilantro. With the cilantro, you'll need to be careful because they have really long uh, stems, and so you need to make sure you take them off. I use a handful of parsley and about two handfuls of cilantro. Probably use about 20 or so stems of cilantro, which is coriander. That's a really wonderful flavor. Okay, so once you have your piles, sort of have a double pile of cilantro for what you have for your parsley, and then just cut, chop it up into tiny little, tiny little pieces. I love chopping herbs. <laughs> I don't know why. It's funny. I do really like it. Begin to I put it into a big bunch, ch chop them up, and then fold them into each other and chop it up in the other way. There we have it. When you're done, toss it into the mixture. And then we're going to start mashing all the, the everything in the mixture together with a fork. So now all we're doing is just mashing everything that we have in the bowl together. If your um, avocados are a little bit too hard, 
then you might have to get your knife out and sort of chop them into smaller pieces. But if you got a nice uh, mature one, it should just smash right up into little, it's gonna become sort of a cream almost. It takes time, you're gonna have to do it for probably, I don't know, a few minutes at least, while your, your fork sort of goes through all the, the guacamole. The more mature it is, less time obviously it'll take to, to do this part. I have one in here that's, you can see here, it's really easily mushable, and is that a word, mushable? <laughs> And I have another one which is uh, sort of not quite as ripe as I would have wanted. And so it's my fault. I didn't buy it at the Mashi. And if I had bought it from the Mashi, the man would have given me the right ones. But I picked them myself. So Anyway, it just takes a little bit more time. I'm going to go ahead and use my knife, like I mentioned. Just sort of cutting into the, the mixture. Just makes it easier to mush up. Okay, so here it is, all mashed up together. You don't want to mash it up so that it's, it comes actual mousse. You want it to, or a real cream, you want it to be creamy, like it is. But some of these nice bigger pieces are, are, um, are really yummy. Now my mom loves um, guacamole, so this is for you, mom. But she unfortunately uses a, uh, a mixture and it's not at all as good. And so this is a, a real, totally homemade, really excellent one. Now. This is a Rosella, which is just really big sea salt. This one is from Brittany in France. And this is a, a really wonderful ingredient. So you drizzle that in there and make sure it's the really big, the biggest sea salt that you can find. I do two, uh, it ends up being about one tablespoon of salt. And lastly, you take your half lime and you squish it all in. Try to get as much as you can. There you go, and once you've added in your salt and your lime juice, I really used it all, it becomes nice and uh, you'll notice that the texture has changed a bit and rather than sort of a, a moussey cream, it's sort of a much lighter texture. And finally, you add in your oregano. I'll do it with my right hand, even though I'm left-handed. Just give it a nice toss over the, over the edge. A teaspoon, I'd say. There you have it, it's all, all done now. Put it into a nice serving bowl and just put a, this is cilantro, just put a swig of cilantro in there or a couple of them, maybe some parsley. It looks really pretty when you serve it. Don't forget to put your seeds inside. If you have extra guacamole, you can cover it with uh, either some reused uh, styrofoam wrap or um, something to keep it fresh in the fridge. You can also, when you are finished with your lime, it's basically all used up, but you can follow me over here to our mixture and you put the last bit on top of your other ingredients and it just gives a really wonderful sauce. You have your mixture here with your nice sauce. You warmed up your, uh, I use pico en play, which is, they're really good. Oh, pasta you can, you can get at home. And then of course you have uh, sour cream, which is confessed here, grated cheese, and your guacamole. So guacamole is great with fajitas like we did today. It's also fabulous as an aperitif if you do a little assortment of um, crackers or chips. Um, the whole guacamole takes about 10 minutes. Five of them are just stirring it together, so it's really simple and easy, and it's so much better than if you use a mix. So, bon appétit!